Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Up the Guts podcast. Joining you as always is your host, Tricky, my co host, Dill, and uh, joined by a very special guest, Bev, the Bev Show. How are we? Good day, fellas. Thanks for having me on your uh, on your podcast. It's a pleasure to uh, to be here. Now, obviously, most people would know who you are. Obviously, you're a mad Western Bulldog supporter. I love putting your content out. Just got, um, tell us a bit about yourself for people that might not know who you are. Oh, well, I'm a, so, a content creator on, on uh, the socials. So I do a lot of, um, a lot of sort of a bit, a bit of, uh, I guess, sports fan co- type of content um, around my Bulldogs and uh, even other sports as well. Jack Jumpers more recently and, and the Hobart Hurricanes as well is, is something I'm, I'm known for. So, yeah, just creating content on my socials, usually through Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. They're sort of my main platforms. But also I do a bit of YouTube these days as well. So, um, so yeah, just, just a bit of content creating and, um, yeah, being a passionate sports fan, showing my passion for my teams. How did, that, um, how did it all start, Bev? Where did, um, where did it come from? Is there any, um, anyone in particular that you took um, or, uh, like their, their type of style in or have you just blossomed your own? Oh, not really. I mean, I've always been into uh, media and being in front of the camera and sports. So started a live show a few years ago back in, well, 2016 it was, so a while ago now. And um, that's how the Bev show sort of started. And then, um, and then yeah, just progressed from there and uh, started doing different bits of content and, and started reaching people. And uh, yeah, lucky how it's all worked. And um, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess I'm doing content that people love, which is, uh, which is good. Now, how about those Jack Jumpers? How about him? Up and about after that? Oh, 100 percent I'm I'm uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, to be honest. It's a bit unbelievable that a team um that you know only started from scratch uh, 12, 18 months ago in their first season has made the grand final. I don't think anyone expected that. And uh yeah, it's quite unbelievable to be honest. It'll be interesting to see how they go in the grand final. I mean, they can uh, well, they can do anything at the moment, the way they're they're going so um yeah what a, what a story this is why we love sport because of yep. stories like this and um I'm, I'm lucky that i'm a part of it uh, as a as a member now when we forgot to do it last week but i think we've got to do it i don't know at the start of each podcast we like to do highs and lows of the week i think we forgot last yeah, week no we, had, no we did we did it because we've got to do we've got to do something might be tips or something oh yeah tip probably but so sure. we like to just do a high and a low so i'll probably start off my high it's a bit of a different one really Kane Corn's bleaching his hair. Yes. I'm all about it. All about it. I want to, I want to bleach my hair now. No, don't. Please don't. My hair. Oh, please don't. Please, please don't. Why not? Oh, it'd be horrendous. What do you think, Bev? <laughs> Should he bleach his hair? Oh, I probably wouldn't condone it, but um, <laughs> you, you're, you're a big, you're a big, you're a big boy. You can make your own decisions, exactly. I suppose. Yeah. My low is uh, just the same kind of football club as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a rabble, but um, I'm sure we'll get on to that a bit later. And we've got a got a uh, fan mail about the St. Kilda Full Club. I wouldn't call that fan We mail. can um, play later. <laughs> but is still, it, high and low over the weekend? My high, as every week, is Melbourne getting up. Oh, my God. Um, fuck, did not look good early. Um, oh, what a low. What would a low be? Come back to me. I'll, um, I'll think of a low. Bev and high and a low over the weekend. Well, my high uh, would have to be Mitch Wallace kicking the first goal of the game against the Bombers. He's had a, a pretty terrible time of it lately, lost his mother-in-law. And then um, I guess that's also been mixed with a bit of bit of joy um, with the uh, with the birth of, of his um, uh, uh, newborn. So, uh, yeah, it was. I, I thought it was pretty touching to see uh, him score the first goal. And, gee, a low light. Um, I'll probably have to go, well, yeah, Friday night, West Coast. That was a... That was a pretty dreadful performance. Yeah, we got a loan out. He took mine. You got I'll, I'll go up there. I'll go West Coast. That's abysmal. What about uh, Ed Langdon? What do you mean, Ed Langdon? Is he a bit of a low for you? A bit of a, bit of a weak performance on the weekend? Week before. He did his job. <laughs> did his job. Did his job. Did. He will never not play bad, ever. Unless he has 20 turnovers and 21 touches. But, and, but yeah. Oh, no, I want no Ed Slander. Ed Langdon Slander on this podcast. Full stop. No Ed Langdon slander. No Ed Langdon slander. And no Mason Cox slander while we're at it. Oh, no. We, oh, God, yeah. As long as Obviously, no uh, talking about Friday night, how does – with the rolling fixture, how does West Coast – how West Coast gets a Friday night game uh, <laughs> baffles me, really. That's stiff. It's, and at to be honest, Coast. it's actually a joke. It's oh, they're, they're in a bad way. I think it's time to rebuild. 
I don't know why you're laughing. They're, they need more than a rebuild. Like, they need what? Oh, what? God knows. Is is the COVID still going around there, or is that has that just died down? And they're just depending on injuries. Probably West Coast, though. You look at their list on Friday night. It's actually not young. Like, there's actually plenty of experience um, in that team. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hopefully my voice gets through. By the way, I've had a big weekend, but um, but um. Like they have lots of experience in that team. Tim Kelly, Shuey, Kennedy, um, Darling, uh, McGovern, Hearn. I mean, there's so much experience. So what do they do? Do they do they trade a few of these players for draft picks and just focus on the draft and, and rebuilding? Or yeah, they're not in a great space at the moment, are they, the Eagles? No. no. Well, obviously to get Tim Kelly, they actually gave away three first rounders. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's where they that's where that's really And was it worth it? Was it worth it at the end of the day? Do you reckon? The way he's playing, he's a quality player. He's a quality player, but the good. way, yeah, yeah, what he's given to them, maybe two, but not three. Yeah, I agree with Trick. Yeah, fair. Very tricky. So obviously, I've got written down here. Twenty nineteen, they had no first or second round draft pick. Their first pick was forty nine, which was Callum Jamison. Haven't oh, seen yeah. much of him. Uh, who? Uh, who? 2020, they added Zach Langdon from GWS and Alex Witherden from Brisbane, which I think Witherden's been good. I reckon Witherden, has Langdon even played a game for him? Or am I played a few, we can't get in there. And then their first pick didn't come until pick 52. Far out. Yeah, that's problem. And then 2021, they added Petrovsky Seedon and got um, Campbell Chester as their pick 14, but he's currently injured. So they haven't got any. So most of their, most of their talent is 30 years and older. That's 23 years and under, they have no depth. That is not good at all. Rebuild, yeah, yeah. call the rebuild. So, who, Bev, who's one, who's a couple of people do you reckon you could throw names at? Do you reckon they could look at getting some, uh, uh, we'll say, picks for or some cash coin back in their pockets? Oh, yeah, that's 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 a tough one. Uh, is Gaff um, on the table? Gee, well, maybe. I mean, I was surprised that he was even the sub on Friday night. So, um, yeah, maybe him. Uh, do you look at... Do you look at trading one of the big the big defenders, Hearn? Um, not sure if they're if they want to trade McGovern. He's he's a pretty good player, isn't he? Um, do, do they even try and tra- I mean, do they try and trade a darling or something? I don't know. Like, I, 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 surely they'd be a bit annoyed with how like he came back so late um, with all the the vaccine stuff. Like he he took a long time to make up his mind, didn't he? I know there's probably you know there's probably reasons for that, but but still, I I didn't find it very amusing. What about you? What do you reckon? Yeah, well, I reckon Gaff. You can go Gaff. You can you can go a Yo, but I think he's a bit injury prone. Yeah, yeah. But when he's at his best, he's a quality player. But I just think they've got to do something. Yeah. Because they're really they, they don't look good at all. And like I'm a Collingwood supporter, and they beat us, and that's hard to say. But like, still, like that's the only game they actually showed up a bit, I guess. Good. Good. Oh no. I, I think I think they just need a fully like. Get rid of all the. You obviously you got to keep some leaders, but like fully got to rebuild everything. Not, well, I mean not not everything, like not the fucking everything, but they do need to get some picks in. Get because as as Shuggy said, the picks were horrendous. Like what they had, the first pick was at fifty and forty and whatnot. Yeah, you, that's that's di- that's a diamond in the rough territory. Like you, you'll get a you'll get a good player, but what one in a hundred? Like yeah. And obviously, there were some highlights in that game. Question I had written down here is Shy Bolton building to be one of the most damaging and influence, influenced player, <laughs> most impacted players in the competition. Yes. Oh, definitely. Oh, I think so. I think he's he's very exciting. Every time he gets his hands on the ball, I, I just even when he played when he played the Dogs a couple of weeks ago, I was very scared when he got the ball. So. No, he's a good player to have in that Tigers team, especially with, uh, well, Dusty's been out. I guess he's coming back this week, isn't he? But, um, no, I, I agree. I, I do agree with that statement. And uh, Jaden Short played a bit more um, midfield time, if any of you saw. Uh, I didn't see. Because, yeah, so, and he picked up 31 touches. He's obviously been a oh, yeah. good person down at halfback. But the lot, the highlight for the um, West Coast was Josh Kennedy kicked his 700th career goal. Go and he was probably there. He was probably their only player who you could say, Put in a good performance. What he kicked? Kick four goals. Kick four. Yeah. yeah. So he's really yeah. the only one. In a big loss like that, that's a lot. Like the ball's not coming down there much. Yeah. So then we move on to Saturday and we had uh, Geelong Fremantle. And um, I think it's time to buy into it, guys. 
Freo are the real deal. They beat Geelong by three points at the Cattery. Yeah. How many? How often do you see that? And they gave away a start as well. They were what? They were five goals down or something, or or something like that uh, in that game. And I don't think the old Freo would have been able to come back from that. So um, no, I, I think they're. I think they're a lock for top eight. They'll make the finals and it's just a matter of where they finish. And if they finish in top four, then good. But um, no, I've really liked what I've seen from Frio this year. They're a very exciting team. They might just be, I don't have a second AFL team, but if I had to have one right now, it'd be the Dockers, I reckon. Yeah, obviously no Darcy, no Tabernard, no, we haven't had five yet this year. Yeah. Um, And yet they're still putting in those performances. It's just pretty unreal. One performance I want to highlight that will probably go very unnoticed. Griffin Lowe kept Jeremy Cameron goalless. That's unreal. That, that to me was the key to the game. Gotcha. Because he's, he's been in, oh, the form him and Tom Hawkins have been in as a duo up there has been unreal. The problem is if you stop one of them, then you got to stop the other one. So Hawkins kicked two and yeah. Stengel kicked three. I'd say, that's a, I'd say you've stopped Hawkins. If, you, if he doesn't have any, is it, doesn't Haw, Hawkins plays high and Cameron stays back? Is that right? Or is they it, mix it up. Mix it up. I believe, yeah. Yeah. Because they're both pretty workhorses. They can work both work yeah, up and down. Unreal. They're, they're probably two, two of the – oh, much. I'll have to double back on my comments last week, but they are two of the best forwards in the league. Yeah, well, Bev, so last week on the <laughs> on the podcast, we we discussed uh, – I put in the fin. – I'm like, Jeremy Cameron and Tom Hawkins are easily the two best duo <laughs> key forwards in the comp, like, as a duo. He tried to say Sam Wiedemann and Ben Brown are better. <laughs> <laughs> is that even a combo at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Well, is at the moment, but... And I say this with my Melbourne hat and my Melbourne jumper on. Yeah. No. Uh, I, 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 I uh, think, and I, I, I retract my comment. Are they number oh, one? Probably Cameron, boys. Cameron yeah. Hawkins are number one, and Wiedemann and um, Brand is number two. Yep. <laughs> and moving on to Adelaide GWS. Yes, the G- prom. Toby Green comes back. GWS are a whole different team. Really? Toby Green kicking four. Um, yeah, Toby Green kicking four. Hogan kicked three. Cornelio kicked three. Whitfield went back to a half forward flank where he's played a bit, but he's been mixed between a half back and a wing. Went back to a half forward kick three as well. Uh, that Yeah, Josh Kelly had 41 and Isaac Cumming had 33. I just think they looked they, – they're always a so much better team when Toby Green's in there. He's oh, just, 100%. He's the real, he's the real person who goes out. He sets the tone and um, really – Puts the team on on his sleeve and just go goes in and everyone grabs onto that on that energy. What do you guys think of Leon Cameron? Is he is he staying at the end of the season or is he is he on his on his way or what do you reckon? He's uh, yeah, well, this 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 win will will do him pretty work, pretty good, I reckon. I'll, I'll give you a comparison. He has the keys to a Ferrari, but he's driving a, a Suzuki Swift. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he needs to go. <laughs> I mean, if you have that much talent on a list and can't, um, or you made it to a grand final, cool, got absolutely fucking smashed. Um, if you if you can't consistently win and consistently make top four with that list, there's something seriously wrong. And plus, they like young talent, and they and they're all going. If I think a couple months ago they had um, I had the GD West team. If they all stayed, fuck me, it was unreal. Like holy shit! That was that would have been scary. That would have been really oh, scary. Um, I mean, I get a couple of them going, but like so many of them left, just not good. Yeah. So now I'll let you uh, oh, um, couple of injuries in that one. Acting captain Brody Smith was knocked out. Oh dear. Uh, and Ned oh. McHenry was also got a head knock. That, was that the um? Went for a mark. Yes. Yeah. Fuck. Did not look good. Uh, do you want to take the Melbourne game, mate? Do you want to, do you want to talk a bit about the Melbourne game? Right, let me get the stats up. Now, got it. I've got it here if you want it. Oh, thanks, man. I was scoring the disposals and goal kickers if you want to look at that. Right, oh, yeah, we are MCG. You, you were, I'm assuming you're there. No, I was at Rye. Oh, yeah, we we're still, we're still playing, weren't we? No, we weren't playing. You were playing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get on to that later. <laughs> we'll we'll get on to that. I've got some things to say about that topic, but. Still an injury, Pro McMahon. But anyways, no, um, um, you little dog. Uh, <laughs> so, talk to Hawkers down in uh, Melbourne. Didn't look good early on, in my opinion. Um, tell you what, the Hawks look look good. Like I know I'm a little bit biased from Jai, um, but Hawks really like look good. Let me have a look at these stats. I actually have another look. Brown had four, McDonald had two, Gorn had two, Toby Bedford had two, 
uh, track Fritsch Freeze. Apparently, it's Fritsch. Um, and Wiedemann had one. Um, yeah, I know. Highlight for me in that was uh, Max Gorn. Two goals, 29 touches, and I think it's 34 hit outs. I have somewhere written there. 34, 35. Uh, let me try read. reading something. My specialty. 35 hit outs. Yeah, yeah. yeah is that that. That just shows how he's easily the best ruckman in the comp. Oh, who, 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 who would be second? It's a great question. At the start of the year, I wouldn't have really said Tim English. Well, yeah, that's that's probably fair. I'm trying to trying to think. Um, Sean Darcy. Oh yeah, probably. Probably Sean. at his best, yeah. yeah sure. Or a, well, even or a I mean, even Luke Luke Jackson surely would be second. Yes, that's what I want to hear. I didn't want to say. I don't that. like to say that because I'm I'm pumping your tires up a bit here. I but, wanted to um, say that, so I didn't have to. But he, he would be in the he would be in that bracket surely. But yeah, Darcy would be there. Grundy, I don't know. Well, he's injured at the moment. So, Grundy but, had a, a shocking start to the season. Yeah. Agree. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. It's just ever since he signed that long deal, but uh, <laughs> but the curse had had to get it out of him. <laughs> Anyways, a um, couple notes I have for this game. Obviously, more, um, still more, moving to the midfield tagged, in the second half. Yeah, he tagged, um, who was it? Tagged Oliver first, shot him down, then Petrarca impact the game, and then sh- shot him That's down. not the most impressive part, though. Collected 15 disposals just in the third quarter. Really? Far out. And then he got subbed off, I think. Still more. No, he didn't. Oh, who got subbed off? Uh, Connor Nash. Ah, oh, yeah, bad, still more at 33 of 15 of them came in the third quarter. Yeah, Finn McGuinness went to Ed Langdon. Yeah, kept him quiet. Nine disposals. Ed had Ed Lang. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's what I was telling you, mate. Ed Langdon had nine disposals. All right, we're gonna we're gonna solve with the Ed, Ed Langdon slander. <laughs> uh, quick question for you guys. Oh, no. Um, with Ben McAvoy out, is James Sicily a just look like a good fit or a natural fit to be a captain of Hawthorne? Probably, yeah. He'd, he'd be in the mix, surely. He's just so good defensively. Dill, would you? Oh, I mean, from my angle, I don't really know much. He could, he could be an absolute tosser, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. But um, yeah, he he he's just um, he's, he's pretty reliable. He was even playing on um Brown and stuff and beating them to contests. Like one thing I know is with Ben Brown, um, he's he gets outbodied very easily. Yep. Like push you can easily push him off. Ben Brown, that is. Yeah. Yep, ben Brown, yep. Um but yeah, as much as I hate to um slander Melbourne, we're gonna move on. Uh what else have Joel Smith? Joel Smith. his ankle. Yeah, oh, I thought thought was it sorry, yeah. we're played by Ken uh K Chandler. Yeah, he's, and all, he's actually do you know do you know who I want you to talk about? Who? I want to talk I want you to talk about your favorite player, mate. Toby Bedford. There you go, mate. Get up and about. All right. My boy Bedford, whenever he touched the ball, I I would stand up and clap. <laughs> That's my boy, Toby Bedford. Kick two, didn't he? Kick two. Yeah. And and one of the better one of the better celebrations you'll see. Didn't see a celebration, but yeah. Good old arms out. Look at me. But it's pretty stiff because like he played good game and we get dropped for Cosy. Like that's so stiff. <laughs> that's that's just so stiff. Now moving on to the woeful game of St. Kittle Play Adelaide. Before we do, tell me if I play this, Bev, tell me if you can hear this. One second. One. G'day, boys. Sorry. Can you, can you hear that coming yeah, through? Just yeah, want... yep. All right, sweet. We'll there start that go. in a second. All right. Oh, no. So this is a fan, bit of a fan mail. That's All right. Okay. Mail. This is, well, this is actually my boss who uh, joins, <laughs> us, joins us on the podcast every now and then. Mind you, he doesn't mind a bit of swearing. This oh, is no. his thoughts on the St. Kilda Football Club after that performance. Advice. G'day, boys. Sorry I couldn't be there this week. Just want to know what your thoughts on the natural disaster that occurred in Cairns on the weekend. They've had the floods, the increase in banana prices, and now the St Kilda Football Club. I've been telling you for weeks, they are fucking no good. And it, on Saturday night, they just proved my point. Imagine being a dad, waking up your son and saying, hey, son, we're going to see our first Saints game on the weekend and then taking through that shit. <laughs> they are putrid. Oh, no. There's one thing you need to learn if you want to be a top side in the AFL. And you do not sell your fucking home game for cash. I would have more of an impact on the economy in Cairns by spending a week there at Gilligan's than the St Kilda Football Club. <laughs> Fuck off, St Kilda. You're no good, and you will not make finals. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, what are you That's hard hitting. That is hard hitting. 
it all back. It's not back. Now he um he told me he was gonna write something up, and I I, I said no, he did it. Yeah, he goes, I'll oh, I'll give you something. He goes and records. He comes back, guys, send you a voice message, and I sit there listen to it. I'm like, no, you haven't gone there. <laughs> you haven't gone. I mean, he's right. Yeah, so uh, what were your thoughts on their performance? Like, everyone was saying that they're supposed to be the real deal, but what do you think, Bev? Well, they just had a poor night in front of goal, I think, 4-18. I mean, you're not going to win many games doing that. I mean, yeah. and and is it be- is it really because of the game being in Cairns? Like, can you really – is that really a genuine excuse? I, I don't know if it is. I do well, I feel concede. Like Kilda, I feel like St. Kilda's inactive goals has been going on for a while now. Oh, yeah, 100%. And- it's, last year, they lost a lot of games last year that they probably would have won if they had a kick straight. So it's been an ongoing problem. And they just don't look like they want to... Yeah. It looks like they're trying to fix it. If, <laughs> well, they might be trying, but it doesn't look like I mean, it. The, the performances they're putting up you consistently. Hope, you'd hope they're trying to fix it after what four goals they did. Yeah, and um, what really did... Um, Port booted five of the last six goals, pretty sure. Obviously, it was a um, low-scoring game. St. Kilda, 4-18, uh, to be 42... Fair, Feed by Port Adelaide, 5 13, 43. To be fair, though, um, it is a historically low scoring ground. Um, what was it? Alice Springs, was it? Cairns. Cairns, either or either. Um, it is quite because the, the climate change is like dramatic and like, um, who? Even, oh, nah, it's more at a, at a same because of. Adelaide and Melbourne are kind of the same weather. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not Jane Bar. I think this time of year they probably they, they. I think they get double the amount of rain or something. I was listening get, to the uh, other yeah. day. Or I think I heard on SEN. I think Jared said. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Oh, All yeah. right. Yeah. So they probably should play it. They probably should play it a bit later in the year if they're going to play in Cairns. Yeah. I think St Kilda should still play games in Cairns because they they are a club in debt and they need the money. Roger. Yep. Now, um, obviously. So are we are we all saying St Kilda aren't the real deal? Oh no, we're they're in the four. Do, do you do you think they'll be in the four at the end of the year? Well, no, I don't. But I do think they'll make finals. I think, I think they they did win about five in a row before the weekend. So, um, and yeah, I I do think they'll make the eight, but I don't know if they'll make the four. One game doesn't really define the season. No, it doesn't. No, uh, well, I think. I think that bloke sending in the message has gone a bit overboard, I think. I think he just needs to calm down. Yeah. Uh, Bev, and um, if you wouldn't mind, he wants a bit of a shout-out. Just shout Connor, would you? Shout-out uh, to Connor. you, Connor? Is he secure? <laughs> he's not a, so he's a secure supporter? Uh, no, he's an Essen supporter, actually. Right, okay. Well, so you, can hear, you should hear his thoughts on that. <laughs> oh, I'll look forward to that. Oh, we, I'll take the piss out of him not to work all the time. Let's go around going, flag dons, flag dons, flag dons. Right, that's yeah. Good. Not for another 80 years. Oh, do you want to hear, actually, a bit off oh, topic. No. Oh, no. Bit off go. topic. Um, oh, no. So one of my mates at work is a Richmond supporter. Oh, no. He, like, he doesn't watch the footy that much, but he watches it enough. And um, I don't know if you guys remember, but they put an April Fool's joke out one time um, this year. They, they added Matthew Richardson to the supplementary list. Oh, no. They, they put it out there. Oh. <laughs> he fell for it. He only found out last week. That it wasn't true. And he goes, No, nah, I swear to God, he's on the list. I'm like, I'm telling you, he is not on the list. I would know. Uh, he goes, I'll find the article. I'm like, Go on then. He pulls up the article, shows me. I'm like, Click on the link. I guarantee it's not real. Clicks on the link. He's gone, I'm going to prove you wrong. Guess, never mind, says April Fools. <laughs> Every time I work, whenever he walks past, we just go, Richo. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> yeah, that's so sad. <laughs> You're a shocking man. It's a trick. <laughs> oh, anyways, moving on to, uh, Carlton, North Melbourne. So Carlton, 17, 12, 114, feed North Melbourne, 10, 4, 64. Mackay with four, Kerno with three. Now those are some two key forwards that could be up there as one of the two damage in the competition as well. Uh, what yeah, else we got? Cripps, 35 disposals, a goal and 10 clearances. Is he your Brownlow? Is he your pick for the Brownlow so far, Beth? Oh, yeah, I think so. It, yeah, he probably, because he missed that game, didn't he? And he also, that Gold Coast game, he was injured, so he's probably lost a few votes from those games. But he, he would have polled in most games he's played so far, though. So he'd be up there for sure. Well, that trigger doesn't even have to ask me. He knows I'm not going to say Cripps is. Yeah, but, oh, he, watch him say, "All right, who's his favorite for Brown? Like, listen, to this. I know who he's going to say already. Go. Do you? Yep. Uh, he will say Christian Matraka, Toby Bedford. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon Toby Bedford, number one, and close second, Christian Petrarca. 
Hey, oh, get off it. Ben Brown winning Coleman. Oh, my God. <laughs> ben Brown winning Coleman. Right. You've lost the pot there. <laughs> oh, honestly. That's you, harsh. You've lost the pot. But um, anyway, so did anyone see Nick Larkey's bizarre tunnel of Lewis Young? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. That was, that was that was a bit weird. Stupid. Because I thought the, the umpire called um a free kick before even before he t- no ah uh, before he tunneled it. Yep. And then umpire came in and he tunneled and then it was just a massive punch on. Um, I don't think it would have been a punch on, but yeah. I mean, chon whatever. <laughs> but but was, I want to get both you guys' thoughts. Have we all seen the Lewis Young hit? The one he's got reported for. Have you seen it, Bev? The one that everyone's going on about the Lewis Young, the front on contact one. Yeah, is that is that going to the tribunal tonight? Did they yeah. end up yeah, taking going, yeah, going, be, going to tonight? He's got a week as as it is so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to see how it how it goes with the um, yeah, at the tribunal. What are your uh, thoughts on it? Well, if you say you're sitting in the tribunal, what would you mm, be saying? Yeah, I'd probably take away the one week. Maybe it's probably not worth a week, is it? No. Well, it, it was graded high. I think high impact, but he didn't get him in the head. So it was just front on bump. Which one? Oh, I don't think I saw this. You know, it was just a front on bump, and I think Zerha came on afterwards and uh, continued continued playing. So, oh. oh, was that the? Did he hit the ribs, or is that another? Yeah, that, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. When Zerha went down, that that one's got a week so far. Uh, I, I I didn't say. I just I just saw a photo. I'm I'm just gonna say if that gets a week, the bump's dead. The bump's already dead. Uh, I'm saying, but the bump's officially dead. If that gets a week, the bump's already dead. Full stop. Yeah, I think if well, if Zerha if Zerha came back on and was fine. Then um, surely that's going to contribute to him yeah. getting off because usually we see if it's if it ends up being a concussion or something like that and they miss a week, then that you know that contributes the uh, the the impact and the result impacts the I guess the outcome of the suspension if that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, the bump the bump probably is dead though. In all fairness, <laughs> yeah, I agree. You can't you can't do anything anymore. Like. Everything's just so closely ruled. Like, yeah, it's oh well, a bit annoying. But can do. do you guys see the Ben Cunnington and Sam Doherty hug? That was a nice touch. Because they've both suffered cancer, haven't they? Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, so yeah. there was a moment. They, they got a moment, moment, touching moment. It was just a photo. They both died. So uh, that's that that's, that's, that might that should have been my highlight. Really, if so, I yeah. knew that, that would have been my highlight. I, I would have. Uh, that would be my number one highlight. Second highlight would have been Melbourne. All right, now moving on to Sunday. Collingwood Gold Coast. My first live game for the years of Collingwood Supporter, and I've got some big notes to go on here, so bear with me. Wow. Okay. And some okay. very, very strong um, thoughts on some players here. Can I chirp in really quickly? Okay. Yeah. Did anyone catch the Gold Coast cheer squad? I tell you, tell you yes, I did. And I uh, was supposed to go to that. Jordan go Yes. yes. <laughs> it's, um, it, there's, I'll just quickly go through it. There's a group on Facebook. It's called Foopy Posting, and they just... just Post just random stupid shit. It's a, it's the most. I don't know how it's funny, but it's just funny. So they've all organised a um. Everyone organised a trip. Where everyone was just going to go flock the Gold Coast cheer squad, and there was about fifty of them. And um, yeah. Well, they they flocked it, and they oh I wanted to go. Me, and my brother wanted to go, but unfortunately he was playing football. I'd probably rather watch the Gold Coast. Um. And yeah, yeah, supposed to come with me too. Yeah, I was supposed to go tricky, but sorry, mate. Um, yeah, I reckon that was good. And I had about three Gold Coast supporters sitting a few rows in front of me. Every time they kicked the goal, they got up, they'll be drunk. They go, Woo, flaving their flag around as everything. they should. Can't the mighty son. And um, they're, they're doing it this week again at the VFL. They're going to they're all going to Williamstown, and they're um, <laughs> they, they, they said three thing, no, three, no, three or four things, I'm not sure. Number one, bring flares. <laughs> number two, um, bring drum. Number three, bring um, banners. And number four, bring your Ackermanners. They're the four things that you didn't do. I, I don't mind that last one. Uh, 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 Ackermanners is a strong thing. Um, but yeah, go on. Sorry, Trick. I just want, so I, I just want to say that. Yeah, no, no worries, mate. Uh, with that <laughs> game, so we got up 115 to Gold Coast 90. My check, four. Get even three. Josh Dacos, who I thought was very good all game, kicked two. Um, but Casbolt kicked four and Chol kicked three, which caused real havoc. Uh, Aiden Begg debut. Looked all right. Looked all right for Collingwood. Looked all right. Um, nothing um, amazing. But what really, really frustrated me when I was watching it, and I, I went with my dad, and we were both saying this. 
every time the ball went into the Gold Coast four line, Levi Casbolt was just marking everything and it looked like no one had accountability for He's him. He's a gun. It looked like no one had accountability for him. A gun. Like, I think they had Jack Madgen on him and, like, <laughs> he, he's worrying about kicking his second career goal, running up, oh, oh, oh I'm going to launch from 60 metres. Oh, no, what, no. what about what about, oh, no. what about lining up on Levi Casbolt and at least stopping him from getting a mark? Oh, co- you're common Collingwood nuffy. Oh, like, and I, to be honest, everyone's saying we... The way we're going, we could nearly push for finals. I think no. I don't think no. I think I no. think where we go down is no. our defense. Jack Madgen is not good enough. Oh. I'm saying oh. right now. Oh. As, a, as, well, as a good oh. time well, he's not good enough to be a key defender. Oh. He will play oh. as a key defender. Darcy Moore, great attacking player, has no accountability for men, does not defend. Oh. They've obviously don't they're not playing man to man. They must be doing some sort no, of no, no, but like. It, he just runs off on his own and like he gets all like great play. Don't get me wrong. I love the way he plays. He's but a Kmart, often, um, you, Stephen May. You often see the people that Darcy, when Darcy Moore comes up against the high class forwards, he might have a good game, all these intercept marks. He's a pony often gets five <laughs> because he's worried about getting all these cheap intercept marks. How about lining up on a player <laughs> and stopping him? <them? laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I thought Connor went in hard. Jesus, tricky. No, but like it was just really frustrating. Like, there was no accountability whatsoever. And like, they were just getting out the back. And I was thinking, oh, my God. Yeah, your team sucks. No, but it was just like, show some accountability. And there was times where like Braden Maynard had to go, or Jeremy had to go pick up the scrubs because Madison's running off trying to get a 60 meter goal. And Maynard's gun. Just thought I'd put that in. Yeah, Maynard is a freak. But like, it was a good win, but I just thought that that one's, oh no, I've got a, I've got a couple oh, more. Oh no. I might have to. I might have to. Um, I'm going in real re- hard. Reach over and mute him soon. There's a guy in the VFL <laughs> playing, who I think I know will be a star. Don't ask me why he's playing in the VFL. Ollie Henry. Why is he going to be star? Oliver Henry's playing in the VFL. Why is he going to be star? Kick seven on the weekend. Okay, he's going to be a star. Kick four the week four. One of our best first year player last year. He's the future of that forward line, isn't he? Uh, Surely. The key yep. or. Uh, it's Jack Henry's brother. Like, I think he's just below, like, high the key. But so he's kicked seven and four. How he's not getting a game, but somehow Callum Brown is? <laughs> Callum Brown kicked a snag. I don't know about No. Every time when I was at the game, Callum Brown did not pick up a clean ball once. Not once. <laughs> was so fumbly. You know, Tyler Brown in the mix there too, nearly. But Callum Brown cannot be getting picked over Oliver Henry is all I'm saying. You're nuffy. It just baffles me how you can leave Oliver Henry in the VFL after he kicked seven this week and yeah. ca- you leave him someone like Callum Brown in there. He does nothing. Poor Callum. Poor, shout out to Callum while you at it. But like, oh, it just, you can't give him a shout out <laughs> after you abuse <laughs> the shit out of him, Tricky. But I was just sitting there. Oh, my dad was on there too. He goes, oh, here's that Callum Brown bloke again. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. But just, I don't know how you can keep living out. And Caleb Poulter's another one. Constantly racking up 20 touches. I thought he was an up-and-coming wingman last year. Like, he had a really good season. And yet we're consistently leaving him out. It's just. What about what about Trent Bianco? I, I don't mind him. He, should he be in the team? He probably should be too. I, I like him off that half forward and pushing the mid. Yeah, through. yeah. So I don't know. Like he could be playing over Callum Brown or Tyler Brown. It's just some people that are getting left out. I'm just sitting there going, how? Like why? Whereas like our forward line, I think sometimes lacks a little bit. But on on the topic of our forward line, how good is that Jack Ginevan bloke? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what are we thoughts on Jack Ginevan, guys? Gun. Oh yeah, no, he's he's a exciting player. Yeah, no, I like the way he goes about it, and um, it was very exciting to watch on Anzac Day, and probably backed it up uh, again on Sunday. As that goal of the year contender, anyone see that? The one on the yeah, it was good. Oh, very good. Watching that going, how did he just walk through? Oh, gun. Must be the only. Oh, it was it was just oh, it's it's the sleeves. It's the sleeves. You reckon anyone who wears sleeves is automatically. Going to be a highlight player. Dylan, you wouldn't wear sl- long sleeves, would you? <laughs> yes. Oh, no. You can't be saying that, mate. Yes. Now, also, just to add, everyone says the Mason Cox experiments are over. I'm going to float something. Oh, no. Oh, no. As much as I don't like to. As much as I don't like to. I'm going to pull out some stats here. Oh, tricky. What are you doing? We lost, we lost the hit outs. Oh, no. 45 to 17 on the weekend. That's not good. 
Darcy Cameron and Aiden, Aiden B, the debut, played. Mason Cox in the VFL on the weekend. 21 disposals, three goals, seven marks, and 25 hitouts. All right. First of all, Bev, Bev if you are unaware, um, about, I think it was last, last episode, was it? Or the episode before? Um, Tricky was absolutely putting so much shit on Mason Cox. No, but I'm just going to float this. You're asking there. him to come back in. Yes. No, no, no. I was, I was pretty as nothing. a forward. As a forward. Typical. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to float this. Why don't they try him as a Ruckman with Grundy down? He's... Why don't they try him as a Ruckman? Great question. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, that's, that's, I'll that's float, probably uh, the only life. He, like, that's probably the only spot he can yeah. probably squeeze some life out of his career. Line, his forward line's gone. Reckon. That experiment's gone. But we haven't, I don't think we've ever purely tried him as a Ruckman. I reckon he should just go play basketball again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the NBL is probably waiting for him. Jack isn't Jumpers, it? sign him up. No, I don't know about the Jack Jumpers. Like, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, no, nah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think we've purely ever used him as a Ruckman. No. It's always just been a forward yeah, and forward. Or a bit of a pinch hit. But, like, what have you got to lose with Grundy at, really? Yeah, true. I mean, what do you And that Beg, that Aiden Beg is. I'll make finals. Like, he, he was all right, but he's an undersized Ruckman at the same time. He's only 197, I believe, 197 centimeters. A crip is that height. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, far out. Uh, it's just, just something to float there. But I, I think as a forward, do not ever think about him again. That's what I'm saying. But we got Nathan Kruger, even though he's a sore shoulder. I like to look at Nathan Kruger. But I just have thought maybe him as a ruckman. Just a thought. Just I don't know. What, what, do you, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, if you can tap, you can tap. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't, know. I don't really know what to take out of that VFL stats, the, the yeah. performance there, but um, yeah. oh yeah, well, I, I suppose, you know, give it a go, see how it goes, but um, yeah, I'll I, back, I don't know. I'll, be, I'll back um, begging again. Yeah. I can one more. If he plays, if he, hopefully he plays Ruck fully. Do you know if he played Ruck fully or he just went Ruck fully? Oh, I think he's normally number one Ruckman when he goes in. You'd hope so. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Nah. I can try it one more week and then try AFL if it doesn't work. He's going to play for Perth Wildcats. <laughs> Wildcats. Oh, no. They need all the help they can I'm get saying all, I'll end it here. Oliver Henry needs to be in this week. Can't be kicking bags like that in the VFL and not be getting a look in. Well said. And uh, Callum Brown's getting a look in. But, uh... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shout out, Callum Brown. Tricky. You can't do... Tricky. I'm... You can't do... Yeah, you're in a shambles, Tricky. Oh, okay. Anyway, so... Moving on to the next game. Bev, do you want to take us through the Bulldogs game, mate? Yeah, this is the game I want to talk about, folks. Forget forget Collingwood, Gold Coast, or Port Adelaide, St Kilda. This is I talked a lot. This could go. This could go. This is the one. No, I'll keep it short. I'll keep it short. I I was. I went to the game actually, so I was pretty happy with how the dogs played. They got a now Connor. Connor, who called in before, was the Essen supporter. Was also at the game. Was he? I didn't. We didn't. I didn't see him. Well, maybe I did. I don't know. But I, I I forget people's names. But um. No, look, the Dogs won. They won by 30, 32 points, 16-7-103, defeating Essendon 10-11-71. Um, I think the, the big thing for me, there was a big differential in the inside 50 count, 66-39. to 39. I think the Dogs probably could have played a bit better, actually. Um, they probably went inside 50 at times and didn't quite find a target. Um, but, um, no, Dunkley was, was terrific. Uh, 29 disposals, a uh, couple of goals. 100th uh, game for him. He was uh, absolutely superb in his 100th game. I thought to, I thought Robbie McComb played pretty well as well. And there was some some other standout performances. Peter Wright, I think he kicked a bag of seven on us last year. He, he, he had an okay game with four goals, but um, it wasn't enough. So, um, yeah, no, I liked what I saw from the Dogs. And hopefully they can... Uh, hopefully they can keep it going and get a bit of a run on, fingers crossed, from from my point of view anyway. Now, what what's the go? I'm going to ask you about this. Marcus Montepelli. Uh, when we did the preseason predictions, majority of us had him at, on this podcast as the Brownlow favourite going into this year. Yeah. What's the go with Bontepelli and the way that Bulldogs are using him? What are your thoughts on that, Bev? Yeah, well, they obviously feel like they're they're lacking some forward presence, especially with Josh Bruce um, out of the team, and, and Tim English is also a big out as well. So they, they've clearly been playing him forward a bit more. Uh, I didn't mind his performance. Um, I didn't mind it against North Melbourne, but then North Melbourne are a poor defence. So, you know, probably anyone, maybe even Mason Cox could could do probably uh, well against a, against the North Melbourne, against the North Melbourne defence. Um, but, but no, I did like the, the way it looked, but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't quite work against the Crows and, 
look, his best his best footy is in the midfield, so that's where he should be playing majority of his time in the in the midfield. He didn't finish second in the Brownlow Medal last year and win a Best and Fairest because he was playing up forward. He he finished second and, and won a Best and Fairest because he played in the midfield and played the role extremely well. So I do want to see him a bit more in the midfield. Um, I don't mind him pitching forward uh, on, an, on an occasion, but, yeah, I, I do agree. He does need to be in the midfield, yeah, more more often than not. And um, hopefully Josh Bruce or someone can come back soon and support Norton because he's well, he was pretty quiet on the weekend, Norton, so we, we didn't really need him in the end, I guess. But um, and that was when the small forwards... They actually did stand up on on Sunday, but um, hopefully we can get a second tall in there supporting Norton at some stage. Jamal Yugo Hagen, where's he at? Still developing, I think. Um, yeah, he's a tricky one. See, a lot of I've, I've been getting a lot of comments lately, especially on my my shows. Is he the worst pick one we've ever oh. seen? And I think that's a bit harsh because Jack Watts. Jack Watts. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's a bit harsh because he's a Ford, and you know Fords do take a little bit more time to develop, and and also as well, he's, he's coming out of a draft year that, um, you know, didn't it was it was through COVID they didn't play a lot of footy. Not that that's much of an excuse, but you know it's probably is a little bit of an excuse. But yeah, he's still developing. I think there was I think there's been some good signs in the games that he's played so far. I was a bit. I was a little bit annoyed that he he was dropped on Sunday because I think he needs to be in that team on a regular basis to develop. But Bevo's the coach, not me. So um, hopefully we see him back in there soon. I feel He's like got the potential. I feel like you just had to play him for the whole season. We've dropped yeah, him. yeah. You just had to play him, back him in, and go look. We're backing you in for a full season. Show me what you can do. Yeah, yeah. And oh yeah. That believe yeah, that you're backing him. I feel like dropping him is just going to knock him back down a bit. Yeah. Yeah, That's just yeah, no, I, yeah, I agree to to some extent, um, for sure, and um, yeah, like I said, he's he's shown some promising signs to to me. He just hasn't quite put it all together yet and had a a breakout game like some of these young players can. I feel like though he's not really, I don't know if he can play that second tall forward role to Norton. No, I feel like he's a, I feel like he's a bit like a fridge size player Bailey Fritch from Melbourne he's a bit like him in the way that he's sized and built and so I feel like he'd probably play a better role amongst a Norton and a Bruce with both of them in the team that's just that's just my thoughts I'm not sure if that makes sense but yeah. but um yeah why was it do you, what's um been different in the Bulldogs game this year why do you think it's been such a slow start I don't think the midfield's been as damaging as it was last year. I think um, I think they've probably been beaten out of the centre a bit more often than they would like to. Uh, forward line's clearly been an issue uh, this season. That's probably been the big issue for me. We we just tend to sometimes get it in there but not get the rewards for it. Um, there's been a few cracks in defence as well this season. But if I had to put it down to one or two, it'd probably be the, be the midfield and the forward line. Just, just not that connection there and just not that dominance there as it was last year. And Bruce was a very big goal kicker for the dogs last year. So taking him out has probably impacted things a fair bit. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm just getting my notes back up. Oh, shambles. No, I'm just saying I had any more notes <laughs> for that game. Oh, that other one um, mentioned Sam Draper was pretty good though with 32 hit outs. He was probably a key for Essen in there. He would just like to put that. Little Who, bit. Who's the uh, Bulldogs rock at the moment? Steph Martin. He got out um, yeah. Steph he Martin, got, he's still playing. Boy. Yeah, he got out He got out rup, out <laughs> rucked by Draper. I mean, how, how old is Steph Martin, Bev? Do you know, thirty-four. He's getting on. He's getting on. And the, and the problem, the problem is, and this is where I feel like Luke Beveridge doesn't really care too much about Ruckman because you got a, a player like Jordan Sweet, who I think played really well in the VFL the previous week, although he was coming back from concussion. But I'd love to see him in the team with English out. I think he could. I think he could you know, be really good with, with Martin because at the moment Zane Cordy is going in and, and pitching as the second ruck. And uh, I'm not really sure where Zane Cordy is at uh, in his career at the moment. Um, been back. He's, he's been forward. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's much of a forward. I, I think if anything, you play him back. I think, yeah, I don't think he's much of a forward these days, maybe in 2016 in the premiership team, but not, not these days, but um, yeah, I'd like to see, I'd like to see sweet in there with English out, but I think he comes back this week or next week anyway. Yep. Now uh, the last game of the round was uh, Sydney, Brisbane. And these are the two teams that everyone's really up and about about, I think uh, they're probably the, 
The two teams that they're thinking are fighting for the number two seed after Melbourne, probably. I like that. Well done, Tricky. Well said. <laughs> no, shut up, Dill. Anyway, so Sydney, 13 11, 89, defeated by Brisbane, 17 11, 113. Buddy was outstanding with six, three goals in a matter of minutes um, in the third quarter. Heaney, just his usual style of kicking three, Golden two, Haywood and Mills. Brisbane, uh, Rayner, Cameron, McStay all kicked three. Zorko went um, back to a half forward flank and more midfield as well oh, after think. starting more the season off half back. Kicked two. And other than that, Neil at 37, Parker 33, Mills 30. Question here, though. Is Neil in better form than his Brownlow year? Here's some stats from the game. 37 disposals, 26 contested word contestant. 11 clearances, 9 tackles, 10 score involvements, and a goal. Not going to lie, he's helping my super coach out. <laughs> is he in better form than his Brownlow year, Bev? I think it's a good argument to say, yeah, I think he is because um, he's just been outstanding for, for the whole season so far. And, I mean, he was a bit stiff last season. He had some injury issues, which probably costed him a bit. He didn't really last know season. he tag early last year too. Yeah, right? that's true. That's true as well. So, um, no, good to see him back in form and uh, – yeah, I think it's a fair fair um, statement to say that he's even better than his Brownlow year, which is going to be interesting to see where he finishes up in the in the Brownlow at the end of the year. He probably could go close to winning if we're if we're making a statement like that. Yeah. So as the Lions, the Lions had a thirty three point lead at halftime, and as we mentioned before, I said three, but Buddy kicked four goals in the blink of an eye in the third quarter. Mm. Just shows that he can still rip a game apart even at the age he is. Oh yeah, absolutely, and I wouldn't be letting him go if if he's in that uh, vein of form at the at the present. I think uh, Sydney would be hoping they can re-sign him for another year or two, maybe two, stretching it, but at least for another year. But um, now nah, Brisbane, I think they're clearly the second best team behind Melbourne. I don't know what you guys think, but I've I, I rate them this season. I think they're uh, they just they just feel like they're coming together after you know making finals the last couple of years, but not quite being there. I think this year they I think they can go deep if they keep doing what they're doing. Well, James Harms was on uh, who we had on the other week, Harmsy, uh, good mate, uh, was on Triple M uh, Sunday Rub, and he said Sydney were the number two team. It's definitely top four. Mind you, that was before, obviously, Sunday Rub, so that was before the, um, the Brisbane-Sydney game. I reckon top four, in oh, first one, obviously, in order, Melbourne. <laughs> And then without, yes, uh, with, um, I reckon this like a sorted order. It'll be Sydney, Brisbane, and Faro. They'll be my top four. Well, how, however they are, they'll be my top four. As of right now. So you're saying Faro makes you four? Oh god, yeah. You don't think? Have you heard that? Uh, COVID's starting to hit them a bit. <laughs> yep, they got depth. Well, it's coming at the right time though. They've got North Melbourne this week. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, that's a, that's a gimme. Lob. Lob and a couple of others are going into health and safety. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's not get started on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I thought I thought the health and safety stuff was crap was scrapped. No, mate. Oh, no. All right, let's let's move on. Yeah. Um let's look touchy at- topic for you, Dill. Hell me. Anyways. Um, <laughs> as I said. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pricks. It's okay. Back in the midfield. Um had uh, finishing with 22 disposals, eight score involvements, and two goals, I thought was really good. Darcy Fort. Anyone see this? Set an AFL record. Oh, for what? He set an AFL record. He kicked his 12th career goal, but he's kicked 12 straight. No one's ever done it. No one's ever done that? No, nah, 12 straight. Oh. He was tied with 11 that's straight, that's... but he's broke the record of 12 straight that's career goals. Not good. That's, <laughs> that's just an interesting one for you. That's, that's odd. And um, who he was eager with, you know, Fitzy. <laughs> so Fitzy so yeah, he put on, he goes, bloody hell, Darcy Ford, you, you ruined the um, the only um, bit of my career that I can remember. Far out. All he's second now. Congratulations, Fitzy. Yeah. No, that's, not, that's not a great, um, great accolade to have. No, but. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but like, oh, I would have thought there's more. You say it's not a great accolade to have. Just yeah. remind me how many AFL goals you've kicked, Gil. I forgot. I'm ineligible, ineligible to play AFL at my current state. <laughs> Good excuse, I suppose. Yeah, that's not a bad excuse. Not a bad. Excuse. I mean, that's a fair excuse. Now, Dill, do you want to go on a super coach? Super coach? Oh, I want to... actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to read my team out. Okay, no, we'll get onto it. Dill's oh, a bit salty because he calls it to the top three, 
He changed his name to Sir Deal Top 3%. Now I'm top fucking 9%. This is embarrassing. He suffered a loss and um, fumbled the bag. Dropped from first place. And I I think the competition, our Up the Guts League, shout out to everyone in the Up the Guts League. Can I do my headphones is that, This is not good. I don't this, is, this. this is, it's that tight. Dylan's dropped from first to fourth. Far out. Hey. Yep. That's a big drop. So right, Riles, which is Riley Worsling, is taking your spot at the top. Really? Yep. Far out, all right. And uh, Connor, kiss your dad. And kiss your dad. We've got some interesting names for you. I'm going to read out some more some names for you, Bev. Listen, oh, the go, guy who we heard before, Connor, his name's Kiss Your Dad and the Lips. Oh, shocking! shocking he, sa- he sounds like that type of operator too. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to six. Jolly, Dang. Jolly Hillis. See if you write this one. See more butts. Big name, by the way. Oh. See more butts. Jolly Hillis, big name. I right, see. I I like this one though. My mate Della. Mauritian magician. I don't know who that is, but Mauritian magician is a good name. He's Mauritian. In the country. Anyways, um, what else? Uh, what else you got? Oh, we do not want to read that one out. What is it? <laughs> Show me. Uh, Kai Davis has got Big Mummy's Coke. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, so where's he up the guts league? If we go to the oh, the round oh, beam. Oh, that's not what it is. Can we skip this, please? Can we get on to our footy, please? No, we cannot. First, I, I put, picked up a dub. Wow. Against uh, Will Diss. So I'm, I'm two on the trot now. Two on a row. So I'm foolish. I scored 2,260 to Will's 2,114. My top score player was Tommy Stewart, 187. That's handy. He had a good game on the weekend, didn't he? Yeah. I, I got Jack McRae. I had some good subs. Oh. I managed to get Jack McRae in, but I captained him. Same. I wish I wish I kept it on Neil. <laughs> Sa- I fun with the bag. Same. Back. I um I, I saw my I, I was nursing Joel Hillis, and I saw he had um Neil's captain. So I, yeah, fuck this. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go something sneaky. Put my captain on McRae. McRae gets what eighty something. Eighty, right? and Neil gets one hundred eighty. So now our mate JP, so close but yet so far. Yeah. So our mate JP, who's the star of the podcast with us, Bev, has not scored over two thousand yet. <laughs> wow. Gee. This week he got one thousand. Yeah. Nine hundred and fifty. Oh, oh gee, that's yeah, sick. But, so... but you want to hear what Riley got? So he was nowhere near Riley. Riley got two thousand four hundred eighty-four. Did you see someone got three thousand three hundred in what? Just the whole Good thing. Coach. Yeah. So oh, let's see what he's. Ah, oh, this is what this is why he scored so well in the end, or well, not so well, Who? but JP? Knowing, knowing better. He had Max Gorn as captain. JP had Max Gorn. Yeah, it's captain. I thought he had Max. Oh. So th- Max Gorn got three hundred forty-four. That's the only person that really did well for him and wits. <laughs> Uh, my mate Cade, so he just calls himself 13 FC. Don't know why. Uh, 2,497 was defeated by Table King, 2,453. Oh. And moving on to uh, Sarah Dealer's top 3%. On 2,290 note. defeated by Seymour Bots, 2,310. I'm filthy. I'm actually filthy about that. Hodges Heroes, which is a tight match. 2,277 defeated Jordan D. Brownlow, 2,250. What a good win. Uh, 2,400. He laughs every time you hear that name. Every time you hear Sucks. what a good 2,464 defeated uh, Big Mummy's Coke, 2,371. Uh, Demons, which is Brock. Brock Walker. Yeah, I know. Uh, 2,266 defeated by Kitchen Dad in the Lips. To, he scored well, actually. 2,493. But the we had a couple of 2.5s this week. Uh, Mav's team, 2,502, 2,531. Now, Dill, any trades this week? You're thinking? I'll have to do that tomorrow. Ever, anyone you're thinking that you're just sitting there going, why am I still got him in my team? I, I, I haven't had the courage to look at my team yet. I'm in a, I'm in a bad way. Re- you the- should have seen everyone who's going, he's like, oh. And he put, he put, even put it on your Snapchat. You screen recorded your team. I did. Oh, I was this, fucking, is, this is top 3%. I was ooh, ooh, ooh. fucking very, very, oh. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. All right, you know what we should talk about? Our footy on the weekend. Do we want to? Yeah. Start off with the 19s. Oh, I'm, no, no. I'm, start, I'm going to start to call him Dylan, Dylan Injury Pro McMahon. Can Every I, time you see him, he's got some sort of injury. Can I take it away? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take the seven. Uh, <laughs> so we, we, we uh, good old Devin went down to Rye. Oh, nice drive down to Rye. Where did you stay, by the way? Uh, I stayed at Rye at, a, at my uncle's holiday house. Oh, yeah. Um, what did you stump chat me? Such an uncle's holiday house. <laughs> um, yeah, so I chill, chilled down there for the night, uh, for two nights. Um, yeah, had a lovely stroll down the beach. 
Okay, anyway, it's not, not here for my story. Um, <laughs> took down a rye. Um, may I add, back back in the forward pocket, were you? Back in the forward pocket. I don't I don't know how why I got down there. To be fair, like, I I looked like I was just struggling. Um, I'll, I'll put new? I'll put out my in- injuries. Um, left knee. Uh, it, 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 the meniscus is sprained. I, it's Here chilling. It's chilling now. Like it's it's just really weak. Um, and my right ankle, it's sprained or fractured. We're going to get X rays tomorrow. Here we go. You seem to be walking to the car fine today. I mean, I, I, how the fuck am I going to limp? I can't I can't limp on both feet. Anyways, it's. I mean, it's, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Anyways, I'll just go through my game. Um. Yeah, we, we played well. Um, so, Bev, he likes – he has his own stat sheet now and he's writing them down. He's, he counts every stats of every game he plays. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Counts oh, his own stats. What's wrong with that? Nothing, but the fact you can just – you mustn't get no, that many if you can no, remember them no, in your head. My dad does it. Yeah. My dad does it for me. Oh, yeah. Shout out. Shout oh, out oh, round one would have been easy. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> one disposal. Um, Anyways. I'd uh, uh, fought it in a second. Um, yeah, so – First quarter really, really average, and then we we are uh, we just called our way back in. Um, but so you're talking about the team, you're not talking about yourself, are you? Good, good. Oh, that's something different. You're not talking about. Shut yourself. up. Uh, well, if, if you want, I had I had five. Um. Oh no, no, get back to the team, mate. Oh, what have you done? Oh, you're. A fucking... you're a shit ass. May have just kicked the headphones off, but anyways, we move. Uh, yeah. Um. So yeah. Yeah, uh, it was disappointing uh, to get the loss. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, it was it was very it was very sour. Um, hold up, you know what I will get actually? I took a I took a photo of you, Tricky, on the weekend. Oh no! Oh, the, no. Why way- did, I gave you the logins to the socials on up the guts. Why didn't you just post it to the Insta? I took a I took a photo of it. Oh, oh if my phone will fucking load, or just go into the messenger chat and go folks photos. Oh, that'd be fucked. There it is. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to um, rent. Hold on. I'll go, I'll go on actual message. Snapchat. For those at home, um, I w- we will post it out. It, you know, we, we, let's make this the Instagram post that we're going to post it out. Yeah? Fine. Uh, hold on. Fine. Talk. Fine. Up. I've posted enough about you, so I guess. Ready? Hold on. I'm, I'm going to show the webcam. Oh, I'm going to have to go around the way. Tell me if you can see. Yeah. Trendy old yeah. on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, mate, mate. Ever heard of rotations? You rotations. ever heard of rotations? Rotations. Have you ever heard of rotations? Rotations. You ever you heard of rotations? You should have bought a fucking camp chair and sat there the whole game. That's how much impact you had. Anyway, it's my bad. I just didn't. I, I, I just felt back. It's tricky normally. I feel bad for Ben. Ben's got no idea what's going on. No <laughs> idea. I'm list, I'm still here. Just sit and nod, Ben. <laughs> But yeah, basically, I'll, I'll fill you in, Tricky. Uh, I'll fill you in, Bev. Sorry for in Tricky's um, football career. He has, hasn't played much this year. He's it's been only just started, to be fair. He's been selected twice. Yeah, no. Played probably the the equivalent of played in one quarter this year. Oh, I haven't got much game time. Yeah, no, it's not great. That's right. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm at. Oh, right, goal is, oh, right, score involvement. I may. Right, I, I would like to get take around, get I'd around, like, get around the score involvement. I'd like to take credit for you getting um into the team this week. Oh, why would you like to take credit? Because at training, Bev, you're gonna have to. Oh yeah, yeah I tore him up. N- nod with me, Bev. I um, tore him up. There was a clear um out number in the back line, and I was backing, and then we just let Tricky run wild, and he somehow got the ball. So. We got the ball in training, boys. And we want to know this about how I cleaned you up and you had a talk about it. Yeah. You, all right. Keep in mind, I, I like my <laughs> knee is like quadruple. Tape. Oh, here we go. And Tricky just decides to deck a, deck a cripple about two seconds after I got the ball and decides to stand on me, <laughs> almost killing oi, me. Oi, oi, oi. You got it and I laid a bum. All right. Anyways. And I went to help you up and you were like, oh, no. Yeah, I was pissed off. Had anyway, a talk about it. Anyways, um, Anything else to say, Bev? Any any last any Formula One talk? Oh, to... F one talk. No, there's not nothing on. Oh, oh, Miami's on this week. Um, the times are fucking horrendous. I think it's qualies at five, races at six, practices at like two o'clock. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm not yep. playing this week, so it's all good. Actually, before we know, um go off, it should I get yeah, a bit of a sad note? 
um, had a uh, kind of, well, from the Tiraton Football Club, a guy over here will probably know, um, guy I played um, in cricket and I went to primary school with him, uh, Ben Proctor, um, passed away uh, last week. So it's like to send my condolences out to everyone who knew him and um, his family. So, yeah, going through his tough time, it really hit home. But, yeah, so rest in peace, Benny. And, uh, yeah, gone but never forgotten. I can end it there. Uh, no, I was like, thank Bev for coming on, mate. You just want to let him sit there or what? Thanks, thanks, thanks. No, I'd like to thank Bev. you, Bev, for coming on. And, uh, yeah, just I'll give you a tag in the post, mate. It, oh, it, it's, it's your, 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 it's your choice. Really if it, your, your choice and give us a shout out or not. I, I I'll – like forgive you if you don't, because like Dylan's head is a bit. Of, me Dylan's shit. head's a bit annoying, but <laughs> like, give me a shout out. but we'll see how we go. But yeah, now thanks for coming on and uh, no worries. Thank you, Ben. No, Tune no worries. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thank you. Yes. Uh, ciao. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. And um, yeah, bye.